Hey everybody. So we are back for our last day of devotions and today we are covering uh, John chapter 7 uh, verses 37 to 39. Now I know that's not a lot of reading and I'm going to really suggest that if you want a good context for this verse, um, read the whole chapter of verse uh, of chapter 7 of John um, because there's it really explains a lot about what we read in the text. So go ahead and hit pause on this um, and read John chapter 7. All right, so we're going to get started. <laughs> so um, again, by reading the context, we learn a lot. So Jesus is in Jerusalem celebrating uh, the Feast of Tabernacle, um, which is really interesting. So the Feast of Tabernacle is established in num uh, sorry Leviticus chapter 23, and it is meant as the Israelites gathering in uh, tents. Uh, sometimes it's called the, the Feast of Booths. But they gather in uh, tents and they uh, celebrate for seven days. And the point of it is to remember that God brought them up out of Egypt um, and brought them to the Promised Land. So it's this uh, salvation, deliverance, um, sustaining, uh, celebrating God, sustaining them um, on this 40-year trek. Um, and so this is really um, a really powerful tie-in with the verses that were specifically chosen for today because Jesus talks about living water. And we hear this term living water multiple times. Um, in fact, there are at least a hundred different references to water um, equaling uh, salvation. And so living water is one of those terms. And those hundred references are found both in the New Testament and the Old Testament. Um, and so it's a wonderful um, bridge in between the two um, testaments. And when you think about um, this whole reason why they're gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacle, um, there's multiple accounts in uh, the Old Testament uh, while the Israelites are trying to get to the promised land of God giving them water, water flowing from rocks because they don't have any water and they're going to die. Um, so there's that uh, tie-in as far as the water and sustaining um, in, a, in a temporal sense, right? Um, but then you also have the deliverance, the saving of uh, the Lord from for his people out of Egypt, which you know, if if we uh, then translate for our uh, current age, uh, if if Egypt was uh, the enemy for the Israelites, then uh, sin, death, and the devil are our enemies now, and God delivered uh, the people out of Egypt, and He delivers us out of the um, grasp of uh, those three things uh, when he sent his son um, and when he gives us living water. Now it goes on uh, in verse uh, 39 that it says, now he said this about the spirit. So the spirit is the living water. Um, now we get this spirit from water in baptism, right? So this is the, the living water. Um, and it's, I just, I can't get over the, the imagery, this powerful imagery of um, 
Jesus being in Jerusalem during this time, during this place, for the uh, purpose of this festival, um, which is the salvation of uh, the Israelite people out of Egypt. And now Jesus is tying that into himself, into uh, his work on the cross, into the work of the Holy Spirit through baptism. Um, and it uh, goes on uh, later in, in the, the reading uh, in verse 39 that says, um, for as yet the Spirit had not been given. So this is pointing to Pentecost. And again, this week is all about Pentecost and the sending of the Holy Spirit to all the believers. Um, and that's just a wonderful gift that uh, God gives to his people. This, this gift of the Holy Spirit that we are uh, called uh, children of God. Uh, when water and word meet, uh, that's when we get that uh, invisible tattoo <laughs> being called uh, God's child. And that's something that can never, ever, ever be uh, taken away from us. And so um, the other part that's, that's interesting when we talk about this idea of God delivering the Israelites out of um, Egypt um, when you read the original text in the Hebrew, uh, when it talks about God delivering his people, it reads more like took by the hand and drug. <laughs> and you, as you, as you read the, the accounts of, uh, the Israelites wanting the desert and you know about their complaining and complaining and complaining. I mean, they do this multiple times and they rebel multiple times and they're punished multiple times. Um, it, it's, it's the God had to drag them kicking and screaming uh, out of this place that was uh, Egypt uh, that was going to keep them enslaved, hurt them kill them. I mean, they had already uh, tried to kill the baby boys, right, with uh, Moses's time. And the same thing goes for you and me. Uh, we are sinful by nature. That means every single fiber of our being fights God. And we don't want God. Um, we want to um, wallow in uh, the sin uh, that uh, we listen to the devil, um, that death is um, something that we'd be scared of. Um, and this is where we're comfortable because we are naturally sinful. And this is where God <laughs> grabs us, pulls us, um, you know, <laughs> against our will, um, cause we're, it's, it's fighting our, um, nature to call us his child. And this is for us a daily struggle. Um, this is why, uh, Luther talks about, uh, dying daily to the old Adam, our sinful natures, and rising again as a new man in Christ. And it's a constant battle. And this is the part where God um, won the battle, um, won the war uh, permanently uh, when Jesus died on the cross. Um, the war was won permanently when uh, people are brought to baptism. Uh, so, you know, God is patient with us. He fights for us because he loves us. That's why he sent his son and sends the Holy Spirit. So <laughs> there you go. Um, didn't think you'd get so much out of two, three verses, huh? <laughs> um, make sure to check out the comments below for uh, the uh, discussion questions. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.